The news all around the Walt Disney Company is growing exponentially as we arrive at that very anticipated earnings call coming out tomorrow, if you are watching this video on the day of its release. And yet we are going to take a pause from covering the news such as Disney doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on the pursuit of artificial intelligence in defiance of the WGA strike. We're going to continue forth despite uh, more information coming out about Disney and Hulu and even more. We are going to pause, folks, for something that I think speaks to the cultural war that we are witnessing around the world and which has taken hold completely of Disney. We're going to talk about Splash Mountain. We're going to talk about the creator of Splash Mountain, Tony Baxter, a legendary Imagineer, and his comments recently, two weeks ago, on the controversy supposedly surrounding the attraction. I'm not sure that Imagineering is so happy about this, but boy, we sure are. All right, folks, welcome back to another fascinating video here on the WDW Pro channel. As always, it is our pleasure to have you join us. Indeed, and we mean it. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Today, we are taking the plunge, but not into the briar patch of Splash Mountain, because the only place you can find that still is in Japan. The domestic parks have removed the briar patch. They have removed Br'er Rabbit. He has been evicted, much like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, except in this case, it went along with a significant amount of virtue signaling along the way. In fact, we have reports that there are very young Imagineers, perhaps even those straight out of college who were taking glee, glee, we tell you, at destroying and burning and, uh, well, just taking apart all of those beautiful pieces of art, the animatronics, uh, the memories of people's childhood from Splash Mountain. Quite the disgrace, we believe, by the way, we've covered that in the past. But Tony Baxter, he's the main man behind Splash Mountain, and he is speaking out. And this is significant, folks, because Tony Baxter, well, we believe that he was brought on, hired by Disney, rehired, in fact, brought back out of retirement to supposedly work on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But then, well, maybe not so much. Perhaps Disney only rehired him under those sorts of ideas, but in reality, they did so to put him under an NDA. In other words, no, Tony, we don't want you talking. Stop talking, Tony. We want you to be hired. We want you to believe that you're going to be useful, but we really just want you to stop talking. But Tony is talking finally. I'm not sure if the contract has ended or what is going on, but Tony was recently on a, uh, a, a YouTube channel out there, which Folks, it's called Zeitgeist Spirit of the Time. It's episode 26 of uh, what they're doing. And we're so happy that they managed to get this, this dialogue with Tony Baxter. Congratulations to them. Perhaps we can have them on the channel at some point as well. But uh, we've got the description to them in the uh, link below. Now, folks, and I said that in reverse, in the link in the description below. But now, folks, here's the deal. Uh, you know, I don't believe in us taking advantage of other YouTube channels. I don't believe in playing their content. And, you know, using that for our advantage. In this case, we are only going to take two minutes of what Tony Baxter has said out of a two-hour conversation. And we're going to do that just so that I can provide commentary on this. And again, folks, please go support that channel. Go watch the full interview. And we hope to have them on at some point. We'd be happy to signal boost them. And we hope that this is what occurs as part of this video is that people go check out their channel. Now, this uh, was brought to my attention by Showcase Wishes, or Showcase of Wishes on Twitter. And so I also want to say thank you uh, to uh, the, the person behind that account. We are a big, big fan of that account. Tony Baxter explaining Song of the South did better when it was released in the 80s in movie theaters than when it originally came out. Quote, it was very, very successful. Also talks uh, working with the NAACP on Splash Mountain, bringing Nick Stewart back for Br'er Bear's voice. And folks, don't forget that one of the happiest and most meaningful conversations I have ever had on YouTube it came back when this channel had just started. I think it still has just started, but really when it was just starting, we had Valerie Stewart, the daughter of Nick Stewart on the channel, uh, her final, as far as we know, her final major interview. And she talked about the legacy of her father. She talked about the production of Song of the South, the, the controversies, the supposed controversies that surround it and how those came to be. If you've not seen that video, also the link to that one 
is in the description. I highly recommend it, not just because it's me uh, doing the interview, but because what she says is so, so important. Uh, anytime you have someone and you're interviewing them and they tell you that they were babysat by Ella Fitzgerald, you are in the presence of Hollywood royalty. And forever and ever, we will believe that Valerie Stewart is Hollywood royalty and that her family deserves the recognition that is being taken uh, from their legacy now uh, by Disney destroying the content they were a part of. But here is the video that we have uh, once again with Tony Baxter. And here's what we've got. I'm going to pause this uh, on occasion and give my thoughts on this. But folks, this is just so amazing. Please go support the uh, the other YouTube channel. Again, it's the spirit of the time. Here we go with their content. At Disneyland, and we had this IP that was from 46, uh, Song of the South. And, um, and at that time, it was still in theaters. So there wasn't the... Uh, you, you know, I, I love the revisionist stuff now because I remember Michael Eisner said, well, let's put it out again to see if there's still um, interest in this movie that's from the 40s. And I think it in that last reissue in theaters, it did better than it did when it came out. It was like very, very successful. So, All right, folks. So here's here's an important thing. And I actually did not know this, that Eisner took Song of the South, which, by the way, was phenomenally successful at the time that it was released. This is often completely overlooked as the fact that I believe that Song of the South, when it was released, it placed in the top 10 all time at the box office. I mean, that is that is amazing. Now, we, we never hear that any longer. But then Eisner put the movie back out prior to the conception of Splash Mountain because he wanted to assess, was this an intellectual property that could sustain a major e-ticket attraction? And according to Tony Baxter, the re-release actually did better than the original. Now that is insane. I'm not saying that the re-release put it back in the top 10, but I am saying that I'm, I'm sure Tony's talking about here in, in terms of gross and probably not adjusted for inflation, but still that's very significant that as recently as the eighties, that song of the South was not seen as a controversial film that you could put it out and it garnered, you know, you know, huge amounts of support. Disney uh, just, you know, 30, 40 years ago had no problem with this intellectual property. I'm telling you, folks, Bob Iger is the guy who came in and decided that he was going to make this be controversial. Let's listen to what Tony has to say beyond. And real quick note, too, here. One of the things that's so interesting, Tony, uh, you know, if he is actually working on Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which I don't believe, but if Tony is working on it, he is dramatically uh, in opposition in that statement to the other people who are working on this. And I that's why I cannot see that this is anything other than they they brought him on under a contract to silence him. And perhaps that contract now has ended. I'm not sure. We'll reach out to connections we have and see what we get. Um, none of that uh, controversy really existed. We worked with the NAACP and we had Michael Jackson staff in house working on Captain EO. And um, we, we you know tested it out on every group before we went forward with it. And ended up saying that the dialect was something that they liked, uh, especially the NAACP, because uh, it puts their ancestors into the Disney uh, park to hear uh, characters. I mean, they're all animals and stuff, so you don't see any ethnicity in the whole ride. But um, you could tell that they were characters, you know, that were of the uh, of the black, uh, you know, background. So. Okay, folks, and this is what Valerie Stewart told us as well. The effort by her father in playing Br'er Bear and the others who played the other the, the other creatures, their job was not to create some sort of negative stereotype. They intentionally attempted to mimic accurately the accent and dialect of the, the people from Africa who were living in the Southeast at that time. And so that was the effort. They were not trying to do anything that was... Uh, offensive in the least. They were trying to accurately portray their ancestors. Tony says that even into the 80s that the NAACP thought the exact same thing. Now, folks, we don't get into, uh, you know, believing the thoughts of revisionists who assert intent today in a way that changes the original thoughts of the people who were doing this. And we don't believe in the postmodern people out there who they want to change the intent and the uh, the authenticity of everything because they want to get rid of the past. Splash Mountain, the 80s and 90s, was based on a property that Disney did not have a problem with. 
and the NAACP was supportive of, and it was perceived as being an effort to get it right and accurately portray African mythos, folklore, the fairy tales of Africa, in which Br'er Rabbit is indeed the everyman, the young black everyman who outsmarts his oppressors. Who are the oppressors? The predators. Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear. And he outsmarts them by being thrown into a place they cannot go, but which he can because he's the kind of savvy fellow who can handle a briar patch. And when you ride Splash Mountain, that is your adventure with him. Uh, they were comfortable with that. They said that puts us in the framework of American history. And it's just stay away from the words that have gone on to have worse meanings, like Uncle Remus and a Tar Baby and things like that. And so it's very minor. And so um, they were very happy with it. And we were at, at actually able to get one of the cast members, uh, Nickel, Nicodemus, I can't think of his last name, but he did Br'er Br'er. Um, and wow. uh, came in to do that. It was like 35, well, from 46 to 40, 40 years later. Um, so that was pretty cool. And so he's talking about Nick Stewart there, father of Valerie Stewart. And yes, it was one of the proudest moments of his life to return to revoice Br'er Bear. What an honor. And this is how the black community, the African-American community perceived this ride back then. This has been re-engineered into the offensive intentionally by people who wish to divide. And Tony Baxter is exactly right. They had the NAACP. They had uh, this, uh, you know, the people around Michael Jackson. They had cast. They had uh, famous Hollywood legend actors. I mean, Nick Nick Smith or Nick Stewart is one of the, uh, you know, founding voice actors of all time. And all of these people were brought together to present accurately the contribution of Black America, of African Americans their contribution so that it's not just a Disney world that, it, that has none of that content, that it's, you know, completely Eurocentric. No, Splash Mountain was the introduction of authentic African tale. Today that's gone because now Tiana is coming to town and Tiana is a manufactured idea out of Disney. It is a, well, it's a swapping, right? Because we all know the princess and the frog didn't originate in Africa. And so that is a swapping. I'm, I'm not trying to be negative about that, that movie or that story. But in terms of the value socially, the value culturally, there's no comparison. The stories of Br'er Bear go back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. They go back to Africa. Tony is right. And um, so we, we thought we were on good footing and, and uh, we certainly wouldn't want it. There was nothing in the ride. I will stand by this even today. There was not. Yeah. Puts him directly in opposition to the people who have been tearing it down. I don't believe that he's been working with them. One thing in the ride that in any way was detrimental to uh, anybody, you know, whatever the, the controversy is, is come up with, it's more related to what the film is. And, I think we're way overboard on that kind of sensitivity. So there you have it, folks. Tony Baxter, legendary Imagineer, says that we're way, way overboard when it comes to the destruction of Splash Mountain. It was and is still the most popular attraction in the world. We've covered this before. According to polling, Splash Mountain, even after its destruction on both sides of America, remains the most popular attraction in the Disney parks. And the Disney parks are the most popular parks in the world. Therefore, Disney has decided to destroy the crowning achievement, not only in terms of theme park pleasure, but also in terms of a cultural representation of authentic black African folklore, mythology, fairy tale. I hope they're proud. Well, folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and click it and stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. This is a wrap, but it's not for you. Drop a comment down below. I cover your comments. I care about what you think. I would love to know, do you agree? Do you disagree? And are you shocked at all that Tony Baxter is coming out and stating these things so truthfully, so directly? I, for one, am. And I wonder, maybe it's time to see if we can get Tony on the channel. I wonder if Tony is no longer under contract with Disney. Tony, if you're out there, we're great admirers of what you did and your work. 
all the joy you brought to so many for so long. Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Make sure to catch The Pro Show Thursdays 5 to 7 Eastern Time. Entertainment Explained, The Culture Curve Conquered, live with Pro and all his friends. 